You know, today is the International Day of Prayer for the persecuted church around the world, and they've asked us to take time in our service and pray. Um, not that this is the only day of the year that we pray for believers that are being persecuted. We ought to be praying for them regularly, but this day highlights it and reminds us of our responsibility. I would like to make it the week that we could, this week, we could actually ramp it up to a whole new level. Now, while we sit here in freedom and uh, don't have to worry about uh, being shut down for reasons that we uh, were preaching the good news of Jesus, uh, there are about 260 million Christians around the world that don't have the freedom we have, that today are suffering in one way or another from, um, you know, some of them put to death, many imprisoned, Many have their jobs taken away and uh, suffer all sorts of ways simply because they're trying to live out their Christian faith in obedience to Jesus Christ. And it's so easy to forget them when we live in this part of the world with all the freedoms that we have here. You know, added to the troubles that they're going through is COVID because because of the discrimination and prejudice against Christians, when they need health care, many of them are being refused. And if they're in situations of lockdown, Um, They're isolated from other believers when they need them the most. So this is a great opportunity for us as Christians to remember our brothers and sisters, about 260 million of them around the world that don't have the freedoms that we have. There's a verse that they're they're using this year um, to encourage all of us. It's in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Um, We need to take that and remember that as we pray for our friends. You know, prayer is, we call it a linking activity, a linking. It links us with God, but also with the people that we're praying for in other parts of the world. And if you uh, watched Pastor Tracy's video this last Tuesday, if you didn't, I really want to encourage you to go and watch it. She um, talks with Nick Ripkin. He talks with us there. And it's about what it's like to live in the persecuted world. And there's some links there that would would be really good to help you get a little more educated about what's going on in other parts of the world. And also, just a great little video um, with two bullet points as to how we should pray. And I just want to bring those forward. They're asking that we pray uh, today for persecuted Christians. They would have boldness, uh, that they wouldn't be afraid to talk Jesus, that they would continue to be obedient to him, and they'd have strength to endure in very difficult circumstances, and also that they would know that they don't stand alone. They don't stand alone. You know, they they think they're forgotten, and it's so important that we don't forget them. So we're praying today. If this week you could take it into your home groups, maybe around your tables, uh, when you're going for a walk, because it's going to be like 20 degrees or something, off 13, that's a joke, 20 is a joke, 13 degrees, um, (laughs) I told you I need help reeling this stuff in. And, uh, you know, we could just lift them up to the Lord as we, as we go along. That would be powerful. I'm going to show you a couple of resources in a moment, but first let's pray. Father in heaven, uh, we, we're humbled as we come before you today. We take so much for granted. And we forget that every good and perfect gift is from you. The boundary lines have fallen for us in pleasant places. We didn't choose to be born here in this country. We didn't choose to, uh, to, to be a part of a, a congregation like this, but you took the initiative in everything. And you brought us into your church, and we're worshiping the day with freedom. We're worshiping the day um, with joy and with hope. And we want to just take a moment not only to say thank you, but, Father, to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. It's a staggering number, about 260 million, that don't enjoy the freedom that we enjoy. Just to say Jesus is Lord could cost them their life. Father, there's many today stuck away in prisons, and they're isolated, and they're lonely, and they wonder if the world's forgotten them. I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to them, even in prisons today, and bring them comfort and hope. For families that are separated this way, I pray that you'd provide for them. Because you said that if we prayed for our daily bread, you'd provide. We pray for daily bread for our friends around the world that are suffering a lack of daily bread just because they follow you, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that you'd give them courage, you'd give them boldness, and you'd give them strength to keep going 
when, when it's very difficult to keep going. Father, would you give them your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so they actually get to know you better. I pray that you would enlighten the eyes of their hearts so they would know the hope that lies ahead of them to which you've called them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints. Would you give them a vision today, a vision from Re Revelation chapter 7 of all the church gathered around the throne worshiping Jesus with every tear wiped away from their eyes? Father, would you share with them your incomparably great power? You said that's available for those who believe. And it's the power that you exerted when you raised Jesus from the dead. I pray they'd know that kind of power to endure and live for you. Father, I pray that you'd keep these things on our minds and hearts because we so forget and get caught up in our own stuff. You said we ought to seek first your kingdom, and so often we catch ourselves seeking first our kingdom. Thank you that you graciously nudge us back on the right path. Father, would you let them know today they're not alone, that there's Christians all over the world praying for them. And we'll continue to pray for them. And so I pray, Father, that you would assure them of your presence. And we ask it in Jesus' powerful name. Amen.